living God, who in the abundance of your kindness. So first, the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscious dreads, to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of our Holy Spirit, one God, forever and Thank you. 
that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me and the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'm going to preach for 
16 minutes. So if you add it to that, how, how much is that going to be? That what, what time will that be? 11 34. That's right. So do you believe I will stop by that time? Do you believe it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> if you do, then I will all not have believe. <laughs> because they say, Omnia possibilia. Credenti. All things are possible for him who believes. So today, actually, uh, I went into a kind of overdrive because I have two harmonies. And I'm sure, you know, some of you will look at any one email, you would have received two of them. So, but uh, the theme, as you can see, uh, very vividly in the gospel and in the first reading from prophet Abakal, you know, where he said, the rash one has no integrity, but the just one shall live by faith. And, and, and the apostles or the disciples say to the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. So you can see there is a theme of faith there. So one thing I do want to say about that theme is that faith is absolutely important. Because what faith does is that it leads us up to something greater than ourselves. Faith plugs us into the almighty power. It raises us above human powers and pettiness to the power that is beyond this world. So faith is like, to have faith is like a bird flying with two wings. It will fly, it will get to its destination. But a man without faith is like a bird flying with only one set of wings. It doesn't get too far. Or a man walking with one leg you know, not out of accident, because that's an accident or was amputated or diabetic or things like that. But just, you know, there's no choice. You decide to walk with one leg. You will not walk too far. You get tired. So you need the two. So we need faith. Faith and reason. And the scripture says it. Three things last. What are they? Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love. So, uh, the faith we're talking about is a faith married to, to love and hope. Faith without love is no good. Faith without hope is no good. The three must always go together. And then, and how, where can we get faith? You know, uh, which website can we go and order, place an order for, with, for faith? You know, like Amazon or things like that. Or what grocery store in town can we go and purchase faith? You know, like Walgreens or Walmart or, um, or Aldi's or Superlow. <laughs> you cannot find them in those. Where do we get faith? Faith comes through hearing the word of God. That's it. Yes. It comes through here. But how can they hear unless there was a preacher? And how can one preach unless one is sent? So, but the other avenue is we hear, we receive faith, we grow in faith, is through what the apostles did, asking for it. Also through our readings, daily Bible readings and spiritual readings. And sometimes through the mouth of, of family, of friends, or you fall. So, and that brings us to the theme today. Um, what we saw in the second reading today, you know, to Paul and Timothy. So the theme actually today is stand with the Lord always. Stand with the Lord always. And, and so Paul said, to young Bishop Timothy, do not be ashamed of your testimony to the Lord. Do not be ashamed of your testimony.
Satan to our Lord. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Dear brothers and sisters, you may be wondering why did St. Paul give this admonition to Timothy, a young bishop? Why did he say that? In order to answer that question, first let us ask who is Paul and who is Timothy? Paul, you all know from this past story, was 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 Saul. He was persecutor of the Christians. Because he would get letters from the authority to go and arrest Christians and bring and imprison them and kill them. In fact, he was instrumental to the killing of the first Christian martyr, and that was Stephen. And in one of those streets, he when he was going to Damascus to arrest Christians there, and then something changed. He fell from his horse. And that was his conversion. The blindness he had, spiritual blindness, fell out from his eyes. The Lord spoke to him, and he was baptized. And from Saul, he became Paul. Now from persecutor, he became an apostle. But not just an apostle, but an apostle to the Gentiles. And when we say apostle to the Gentiles, we mean apostle to the nations, to us, to our people. And that was the story of Apostle Paul, a well-trained lawyer and a tent maker. He became evangelized. Now, he was born in Tarsus, which is a Greek territory. So, but he is of Hebrew parentage. His father and mother were Jews. So, but he also had a Roman citizenship because he was born in that territory. So, he spoke Hebrew and Greek. So, when he converted and became a firebrand for the Lord, was carrying the good news to all the frontiers of the known world, then a young man came to him through his grandmother. And that young man's name is Timothy. Timothy's mom was a Jew, a Jewess, a Jewish, but his father was Greek. So, like Paul, he has mixed, uh, you know, mixed um, a race. In our day, we would say uh, that he was biracial. So Timothy got the faith through Eunice, his grandmother, and then. As he was growing, he, he encountered Paul, and Paul took him under his wings. And he became like an assistant to Paul. So when Paul went to the third, he went with Paul to the second and third missionary journeys, and Paul would often deliver, give him a message to deliver to the churches, you know, to where they, they evangelize. But eventually, he ordained Timothy. He, took, he ordained the episcopus, you know, he was a bishop. He became a bishop. But he was still a young man. And now, that is the story of Paul and Timothy. And Timothy took on from there. Now, when you look at the epistles in the New Testament, you see from the 26 of them, and of that 26, 14 were attributed to St. Paul. And letter to Timothy, we read today, was one of those. And it actually belongs to the class that is called the pastorals. Because they were written to people, to pastors, to Timothy and to Titus. First and second Timothy and Titus. Now, to the question, why did Paul say to Timothy, Do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord? He said it because at that time, to be a Christian was not cool. If you're a Christian, you know, you, you are in trouble. Why? Because to be a Christian at, 
at that time was dangerous. And like in our day, it means be ready to be ridiculed or to be martyred. In, most con in many countries of the world, that will get you to martyr immediately that you are Catholic, that you are Christian. So, persecution of Christians was the order of the day during that time. And the Paul himself was in prison a lot of time. He was in prison when he wrote many of the letters, like letters to the Ephesians, to the Philippians, to Colossians, and to Philemon. He wrote them from the prison. So he knew what he was telling Timothy. And he saw himself as a father in faith to Timothy, as a mentor to Timothy. And he said to him, do not be ashamed of your faith in our Lord. So my dear brothers and sisters, what do we see there? We see a relationship where one mentored a younger fellow. So sometimes in our life we'll be thinking, how can I evangelize? I'm a, I am shy, I can't talk much to strangers. There are some people who meet no stranger, but not me. So how can I evangelize the non-Christians? You, you might not need to go far to evangelize. It might be right under your nose. It might be your niece or your nephew who really likes you, who comes close to you, but his parents or her parents were disaffiliated. They are not practicing any religion. You might be the one to sow the seed of faith in that young person. Mentor that child. It might even be your granddaughter or your great niece or your friend or co-worker. Do not be ashamed of your faith. Do not be afraid to share it. To share the good news. And it might not necessarily mean that you begin to preach the treaties. It might not mean that. It might be simple things like he saw you praying the words and he says, What is that? You take time to explain it. It might even be that you give a gift of a spiritual book, you know, carry prayer book or daily meditation to a child. Or you might have, you might give a book like the life of saints or the story of the angels. Those help a great deal. Is it 11 30 today? So anyway, uh, a, true story, <laughs> a true story here. There was a, a man, he was my professor in college. He was vibrantly anti-Catholic. His parents didn't go to church, but they were Presbyterian. So he grew up knowing that he was a Presbyterian. So when he had his conversion, he went to seminary and became a minister, a preacher. The Presbyterian minister, but he was very anti Catholic. He, also, he thinks that Catholics are going to H E L L, you know, that we are more abandoned. So, but his grandmother was Catholic. And when he sees his grandmother, his grandmother always says something about the faith. He didn't want to hear it, but he was hearing it. And the grandmother had a beautiful rose. So, and he always thought that that rosary is like a chain that held his grandmother into superstition. Eventually, the grandmother died. And guess what? He willed the rosary to the guy. <laughs> Among other things. So, when he got the rosary, he ripped it apart. He said, This is what held my grandmother uh, um, in shackle of superstition. But little did he know his grandmother was praying for him, even from the grave. So in the course of his research, he came upon Mass, Eucharist. And he said, where can I find that? Owen was reading to Catholic Church. So eventually, as he was reading the ancient fathers, St. Justin, St. Augustine, and St. Gregory, he decided to go to Catholic Church one day, and he sat at the back. He said, I'm not going to mess with this superstition they do, but I'm just going to watch. The long story short, 
he converted. He was a PhD student at Marquette University. That was a true story. And you know who I'm talking about. Some of you must have heard of him, Scott Conn. So in the same way, you can be, you can be Paul to Timothy. You can mentor someone. You can share the faith. But the watch word is what the Lord says to us today through uh, Paul's letter, uh, words to Timothy. He said, do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord. Stay into flame the spirit that you have received. It is not the spirit of fear and cowardice. It is of the power. The power that saves. Amen. Amen. May we rise and confess our faith. I believe in the one God. Reformation, 
Mary Tomo, Karen Owen, Anna Bean, Eddie Cummins, Lori Feldman, Franklin Shelton, Paul Fitzgerald, Charles Todd, and Elizabeth Shield. Angela Beckton, and Carolyn Paul, and Lula Bruce. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray also for the end of war in Ukraine and Russia, and for the end of corruption and bad governance and kidnapping in the Afro land. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all other intentions, can silence of our hearts. Father, you call us to hope for salvation and for all other good things. Hear our prayers, strengthen our desire to serve you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we see.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah. 
we may be always free, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign.
refreshments will be provided after each mass. Yeah, I would also like to take a moment to say welcome to friends and family of St. Augustine, people visiting us from out of the area or from another parish. So if you're visiting from out of the area, could you stand and tell us your name and where you're visiting from? <laughs> so if you are visiting from out of the area, and or from another parish, uh, could you tell us to stand and tell us your name and where you're visiting from that we might acknowledge you and maybe sing for you. Yeah. Well, it's good to have 
not just one lady. If you have two ladies, then this is to have one lady there. Yeah. So blessed mother will be enough. Alright? So anyway, but you know you can never get too many saints. Uh, if you visit the home of some of our parishioners, you will see city of saints of innocentness. The other thing I want to mention is um, this regarding the breaking up of offering. You know, remember maybe last week or two weeks ago, I was saying that we all can stand that since we are presenting ourselves, but you know, if we, we, I think I discovered that there is at least one person that it, it distracts, it takes away her inspiration. So, and, and my thought is that one person is too many. So, I want to say we don't have to stand, really. We can, because it's not, it's not in the rubrics. It's not in the rubrics. It's just a cultural thing that I, I saw in Africa. And so we don't have to do it. So I would say, don't even stand when the time comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but that's by the way. I don't want to talk more about that. Okay. The other thing is united in faith. We have not met our goal. And it would be wonderful if we do. Because St. Augustine is a name that is popular in this city. Yeah, I was surprised when I came newly and I attended a, uh, it was it was kind of social function. You know, and that was a, a business people, uh, entrepreneurs in the South. And I mentioned St. Augustine. And they all seem to know what it is. So I realize I'm not in a small parish. So please, don't make it small. Yeah, we are not poor, are we? Yeah. We are not. So we need to just meet our goal. We don't have to help anyone else, but just our own goal. We need to meet it. Please, do all you can. And don't also forget what I had shared with you the other time. That when you look around and you know someone who comes to matters, but you have not seen him or her, give the person a call. It might be sick, it might need help. So that is very important. Well, having said that, you will receive other messages in email in case if you have not received them. They will write. Is uh, James King here? Okay, he's not. He wanted me to tell you that he obtained permission from the uh, county or from the city that we can hold public uh, Roseville rally at um, uh, the museum. That's um, where Martin Luther King was shot. What is it called? <laughs> Civil Rights Museum on 15th of October and it will be from 12 to 1. So if you are available, come and join the rest of the brothers and sisters praying the rosary in public square. Because you know, October is the month of Mary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Thank you. 